Good morning and happy new year, all of you. Welcome to our Vitality Academy special presentation by Dr. Harry Ramrein. We're super excited to have you here. Let us know where you're from. By the way, if you're a new viewer, thank you for checking us out this morning. We are very honored and blessed to uh, have this top time to talk with you today. And if you are seeing this in the replay, uh, and who knows when you're seeing this, this is January 1st, 2021. Do us a favor, let you let us know where you're watching this in from. Let me take a moment to briefly introduce Dr. Harry. So Dr. Harry is the founder of the Ishtara Center in Chugonis, Trinidad. And he's been a practitioner of medicine for over 40 years. And now the practice has expanded into a total of four doctors in the practice. It started off as a single story building, actually it started off much more than that, but in recent history, a single story building, and now it's a three-story building and it's a whole center with many things going on. It's a wonderful, beautiful practice. And Dr. Harry, I have to say, is probably one of the most enlightened doctors and people I've ever met in my life. And we're honored to have him here today. So with that, on a brief technical note, if you guys are having any challenges, I'm gonna disappear from the filming here now in the background, and I'll be here to help you in the chat. You're gonna notice in the chat, there are gonna be some faces on there with actual pictures. And those are actually the doctors who happen to be on live from the star center so they are they're not just random people giving advice they're actually doctors from the practice okay and uh, what i'll be doing in the background is those who have technical challenges i'll help you any sort of troubleshooting with that with that i would like to uh, welcome the new year with a wonderful talk with dr harry ramnoran it's all yours harry okay Yes, uh, happy new year to everybody on the on the webinar. And um, I'm myself looking forward to this talk because I think it will unfold before the end in an hour from now. All right, so welcome everybody. For many years, you know, people always ask me about what is to come in the new year. And, you know, I sort of think like this, that the earth is going around the sun and it makes a year when it comes to complete circle. And what is the difference from 2020 to 2021 or maybe 2019 to 2020? Is there a difference? The, the real difference really is the stuff that we as a, as a human being, human beings on the planet um, would actually contribute to the vibrational feel on the planet. And the second thing is the environment. We are hurtling through space. And because of that, we may enter spaces where there are higher vibrations and maybe entering spaces where there are lower vibrations. And when we enter a space with a higher vibration, that is in, this, in the space itself, um, what happens is that maybe we are all elevated and lifted by that. And maybe it's always a better year. When we enter a space with a lower vibrational level, then what happens is that it pulls on the masses, all of us. And in a way, we have a lower vibration and you know the outcome from a lower vibrational level. So that being said, last year, at the beginning of the year, or towards the end of December, December in 2018, 2019, I always kind of look to see what is coming. And we do that using our techniques and technologies and what I found for last year, 2020, was an interesting. It was actually the rune, and I, I use the rune sometimes. It's, you know, the rune is really an, an oracle, but an oracle is defined as connecting with your own inner knowing rather than seeking something from the outside or information from the outside. So I found, interestingly, at that time, um, the rune ingus, and it, it literally uh, meant being in a close, emerging from a closed chrysalis state and being contained in a cocoon and the chaos that happens in, in a transformation. And it also actually in terms of relationship with the organ systems in the human body is connects to the lungs. And that was in December, beginning of January. And lo and behold, we ended up in somewhere somewhere in the beginning. And in fact, it was in December that we started maybe to see cases that resemble the COVID-19. And um, by March, it was pronounced that we were living in a pandemic time. And um, 
I decided to have further look at the the back flower remedies to get an indication as to which remedy literally crystallizes the vibration of 2020. And guess what it was? Rock rose. And rock rose was throughout the entire year. We tested it throughout the entire year from January until recently. And rock rose is all about terror and fear and panic and the feeling that we can lose our lives in the process. And, um, you know, it, I wondered at the time whether it was going to be some catastrophic effect, some cataclysmic effect in some, at some level to happen, because when that comes up, it is always an emergency situation. It's always a crisis situation. In fact, when Edward Bach, you know, formulated his um, series of back remedies, Rock Rose was the first and most important one in the acute crisis medicine that he made called Rescue Remedy. So I wondered about that. But then we looked from month to month from January, then the pandemic exposed its ugly head and um, continued to have its effect and influence on the entire planet. Having said that, I would say my year 2020 was a remarkable one in the sense that there was so much progress being made. It, it forced us to look within ourselves because, you know, I always kind of you know reminded myself many times that prison represents bars that, that you are confronted with bars and yet you there's no way that you can actually move in any direction when you're in prison and so the only thing left for you to do really in a, in a state of, in prison is to turn within that's the only movement you can make and having said that, if we had lockdowns for the end, almost the entire year, which gave us the opportunity to search ourselves, to go within. And if we had that opportunity, then we would have benefited tremendously during this year, 2020. And I felt myself that 2020, we made great strides in the whole you know, movement of human potential, moving from a level, one level to a higher vibrational level. And what is interesting about 2022 is that it gave us the opportunity to dig deeper, to, to look at ourselves, to face our fears like the rock rose state and overcome that because fear should never be a part of the human being, the human spirit. It should never be a part of us at all. But yet we carry that all the time. And why that is so is that we have lost touch with our divinity. We have lost touch with the fact that we are the divine. And I feel strongly that the 2020 is a very interesting year. If you know what a seesaw is, it's a slab of wood hanging over around, um, you know, stuff that can move in either way. And it's at the level, 2020 was the year of being at the level where it could go either way. But it, in fact, it is the year which I felt is so different from so many years. And in my own thinking and my own thoughts, I, I recognize that 2020 was a year that brought body, mind, and spirit in harmony. I tested for 50 years before and 50 years after. And so we looked at 100 years. And the only year that really brought us to the point where we can have harmony between body, mind, and spirit was 2020 at its highest level. I'm not saying that 2019 and 18 and in the future is not going to be the same happening, but it, the peak of that happened in 2020. It gave us a door, a window. And it meant moving from that closed state, that state of chaos, that state of lockdown, emerging. And then 2021, I can give you some ideas as to what 2021 is like when using the same format. And the ruin is Thurisaz or Thorn. And I will just briefly say that Thurisaz represents a new beginning. I was delighted to, to see in the papers this morning in Trinidad on the front page, a new beginning. And I smiled when I saw that because somebody is caught on with the idea that we are actually at a new beginning. However, in whatever way is gonna pan out in the near future will all depend on all of us on the planet. 
And some people may still be carrying the fear and the terror from the 20, with the residues from the 20, 20, 2020 into this year. But I think this year is, is like a, a doorway, an opening. And that's what Teresa has, the, the rune Teresa has is all about. It's an opening. It's something that brings us to a gateway, which actually gives us the opportunity to move forward. But before stepping through the door to the gateway, we must look deeply at what we experienced last year and um, actually, in a sense, bless it, acknowledge it, acknowledge it for what it brought for, to us in our lives and move on. And therefore, 2021 is an interesting year from that point. The, the back flower that resonates with the year 2021 is one called holly, holly. And holly, you can literally encapsulate the meaning of that with love and gentleness as opposed to the opposite of that, which is the anger, the vexation, the hatred, the separation from others and seeing ourselves as totally separate from others. So looking at 2021 from that perspective, I will sort of fashion my talk and for the next, for the rest of the hour on what I see and what I would like to participate in, you know, in the things that I would like to do and encourage people to do so that we can move forward on this planet. It is not left to the forces out there. I will start, I will start by saying that, you know, we, we all look at life in, an, in a way that we have been taught and we have been programmed to look at life. And the important thing about 2020, it is marking the end and the beginning of something totally different, totally different. It means to me, the end of the scientific way of, of thinking, the end of the religious way of thinking. And I don't mean in any way that anything is negative about all of that. It's a time for change. It's a time of moving science, religion, spirituality into a new level, totally new level. And that's what 2020 brought us. And that's what 2021 is going to usher for the next decade and further in our lives. And so, for me, it's difficult to express this, but I have always looked at life in a different way from most people. And it left me completely being alone and uh, in the way I live my life and the way I think. And, but it does not mean that I not, I'm not participating fully in the sphere of life, meaning um, I talk about a quantum feeling which we live in and um, I, I, my interaction with that. And, and the influence that we can all have, not just myself, but all of you out there can have on the, in, the, the energies of the vibrations of the planet. And don't, we don't have to look to others to make changes for us. I think if we all collectively start thinking that we can make a difference and what the difference is all about. Let's go back to the basic principles. In religion, and in science, we all see ourselves separate from each other. We all see even the divine energies, the divine as we call, as we call it, God, as separate from us. Then we moved to a place where we started looking at God as within ourselves. And it is all within. But 2020 is going to bring a totally different level of consciousness, a totally different level of thinking. And that is that we are the divine. There's nothing else. We are the divine. There, there was a saying, I think it was, um, trying to remember the name. Uh, it will come back. But the saying goes like this. I, I see with eyes open and smile and behold his beauty everywhere. And it is interesting that if we can come to understand and see beauty everywhere. Beauty is a thing of the divine and it's everywhere. If we can walk through life and we can live our lives in such a way that we can see beauty in everything and everyone, then I think the earth is going to be, and including the whole solar system, is going to be a totally different place. But we tend to look only at the bad and be concerned about the bad. And that brings me to another point in the discussion, and that is there are two paradigms that we live in. And we need to 
make a conscious decision. And that's what 2020 has reminded us of, of, of our mortality. Because we all were fearful of a small particle called a virus. And all, all we were left with, if you, if you really observe what happened during the year, a tiny virus became such a powerful creature on this planet that even the religious and spiritual people and even most of the scientists could not deal with this. Nobody. We had to sit down and wait and wait and wait for months for someone to come up with an idea like a vaccine so that we can all be saved. And it took only a few scientists to be working to achieve that. But in the meantime, what happened to the divinity inside of us? What happened to the divinity that surrounds us? What happened to the divinity that expresses itself in the, in the context of the immune system in your body? If there is a system in your body that is probably the closest to the divine is your immune system. Because cells of the immune system would sacrifice itself for the whole. For instance, if you have a virus or a bacteria in your body, those cells of the immune system would get to the, to the site where the virus or the bacteria might be located. And they will go for it. And they don't rub it on the shoulder or pat it on its back and say, look, you know, behave yourself. Stop being naughty and virulent. They will wipe it off. They will take it out. And so the immune system, <clears throat> we forgot that we have had an immune system in our, you know, in our bodies working for us and working from the divine. So what happened to us is that we all fell into this deep well, this deep well of fear. And we had a warning way back in December and January last year that Rock Rose was facing us. And Rock Rose is the terror and the fear and the panic. And so what, what happened to us is that when we fell into that deep well of fear, and that happened throughout the entire planet as we looked on the media from day to day. What it did to us is literally separated us from the source itself, which is nothing but us. This morning I wrote a WhatsApp, a very short, that, and, and it was myself doing, doing this many years ago, that, but I said, someone said that we are organic pixels projected from the source. We are nothing but the source itself. What I, I'm sitting in a room here and a camera is picking up my information myself, breaking it up into bits and transmitting it to where you are. And you are seeing me as if I'm live in a three-dimensional or two-dimensional slash three-dimensional view. And that's what it is about. Can you imagine that you and I, all of you, we are organic pixels, living pixels projected out of the so very source itself. And it is not that the source is out there and or the source is within. 2020 has brought us to a point where we have to shift the way we think. And if we do not, then we'll be left behind. I described 2020 to a number of patients of people that I met this year, last year, that 2020 is like a very, very slow moving train. The train literally came to a very slow motion, giving everyone on the planet the opportunity to step on and those who would step on and those who did would continue to move with the train. And those who didn't, I guess we would all have to be putting our hands through the windows and the doorways of the train to try to grab people and pull them in, those who are still interested. So, and does that sound familiar that people who got sick and people who are suffering really badly with sometimes with life-threatening illnesses that we all have to put a hand and to help help them and that's what i'm talking about so where do we go from here there are two paradigms and one one paradigm is one that is based on causes whereas the other paradigm there's there are no causes at all and i always put it this way the paradigm that belong that belong to literally zero cause no cause at all is the endless paradigm is the eternal paradigm is the paradigm of immortality Whereas the other paradigm, and you all, those who have been listening to me for the years gone by, I have labeled the paradigm that has, is based on causes as three Ds, disease, degeneration, and death. 
The other paradigm is based on causeless and it starts from the divine and ends with health. Meaning if we reverse the, 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 the position of those three words, health comes from life, life comes from the divine itself, the source. And none of those, if you look in your body, you can always find life as you are all right now, but you cannot find why you have life. There's no cause for life. It is the very natural state of the universe. Health is the same. It comes from life and there are no causes to health. You naturally should be healthy. You cannot find a cause why you're healthy. But if you have a disease or you have death, there are always causes. So I hope you understand that point of the two paradigms. And it is important that we start thinking. 2020 has given us the opportunity to move from the paradigm of 3Ds, which we've been talking about for years and years, into the new paradigm. To understand that you are that. You're nothing less than the divine. That you are immortal beings. But we have created our, our mortality. It is not the divine has created our mortality. We adopted a totally different program and we bought into it and we accept it. And guess what? I have said repeatedly before that religion gave us two stories, two possible stories that, that happens to us after death. And they made it so good that we have accepted death. And that's why we have been so comfortable with the paradigm of 3Ds. They told us there's a paradigm after that, sorry, in that state, after you die, you enter into paradise and you're going to be in paradise for eternity. Well, we are slowly coming to bring that to a higher vibration, realize there's no truth, but only a story. Then there's the other paradigm, the paradigm of reincarnation, that you're going to come back into a better life. So if we look at those two stories that I've just put across to all of you, what happens with those two stories, it gives us the opportunity to accept death readily and even look forward to it. I, I can quote a man in my office many years ago. He, he said to me, Harry, I am looking forward to dying because I want to be face to face with the creator of this universe. That's to say to him what a beautiful universe he has created. I just kept my mouth shut and very quiet. Didn't say anything at all. You see, that's what we have been told. That's the, that's the measure of the truth for its time in the past two, three, four thousand years. 2020 has brought us something totally different. And it's very difficult to, to express all of this in one go, but I can say to you very clearly that 2020 and the years going forward, that's starting from 2021, which we are already in, is the opportunity for all of us to move from the paradigm that is 3Ds to the new paradigm, the causeless paradigm, to understand that you are indestructible, to understand that you are also invincible and that you have all the power in the world, in the universe. Because we are not a spark or a tiny fragment of the source, you know. We are the source itself manifesting in a form. The only thing is you have to recognize that you are the infinite being and start to think and act. Spirituality and living a spiritual life is a very simple one for me. And we'll go a little bit more in details of that in a short while, but it's very simple. It comes down to understanding, recognizing that you are the divine and at the same time, at the same time, living your life as the divine. And I know for all of us, includes me and all of you, that we are going to make lots of mistakes as we go along. But please recognize the mistakes and correct them as you go along as well. And that's the way we will grow from day to day, from month to month, from year to year. So it is as simple as accepting the fact that you are the divine manifesting in this form. And this form is still indestructible, you know. We have a program that tells us that we are going to get old and die, degenerate and die. That's the program. Remember, in, on the 25th of January last year, coming to close to a year, I spoke about the process of starting the journey in 10 years from then. 
to remove that program from ourselves. It is well embedded. It is all a part of our psyche. We have accepted it. And it's amazing. If we don't remove that program, we are all going to go through that process. Is it possible to change that program? And what is possible when that program is changed and we enter into the new paradigm, the paradigm of the tree of life, <laughs> as it's re recorded in some literature? What, what, what will we become? I'm looking forward to that rather than looking forward to meeting the creator of the universe. <laughs> in fact, what I said a while ago to see the beauty in everything and everywhere is to recognize the divine in everyone, in everything that you see. All is Brahman, as one literature said, all is the, the divine or God, everything is God. There's only one thing that exists and that is the, the divine. And everything you see is the divine. So how can we adjust our lives in 2021 to be in sync with that? And that's what I feel 2021 is all about. It starts with holly. It starts with the concept of love and gentleness as we walk through life, how we walk through the planet, how we deal with things around us, our environment, how we deal with our fellow men and women, how we deal with each other. You know, love is a very scarce commodity in the world. It's a priceless commodity. But at the same time, it, it, very few people carry the energies of love. Because if you see yourself as separate from another human being, then you move love, the concept of love, to a higher vibration, which literally brings it into what I call compassion. And compassion simply means that you are one with everything. One of the greatest sages that walked the planet said, love what your neighbor as yourself. Love one another as I love you or love your neighbor as yourself. You see, if you can move love to love everything like yourself, then you have moved into the, the, the consciousness of I am one with that and that is me as well. Does that feel very simple to practice? And does it feel that it's possible that we can achieve that? And the answer is yes. The greatest thing that we can do in life, you know what? And I'll, I'll come to that because there are three things that I wanted to remind you of in the, on the journey that we are taking in the next 10 years. And I, I can start now. So the, the journey starts like this. There are three things and three important things that are aspects of the divinity that we all need to develop and develop as soon as we can in ourselves. And to start the journey is all about 2021. And that's what that's what hitting me all the time. The 2021, since a few months ago, is a triangle of events. The first is intelligence. The second one is peace and serenity under all conditions. And the third is to have joy, or you can call it happiness if you like. So let's start with intelligence. And what is intelligence? Well, it has nothing to do with knowledge. It has nothing to do with getting, having a high IQ. It has nothing to do with high, getting high grades in whatever you do and doing it well. Intelligence simply is defined and it's a very complex term and I will go through that because that's the number one thing that we need to develop. We are all intelligent beings, but we have, that has been suppressed and has been literally erased from our psyche. We, have, we, have been, we are lost in the sense that we do not recognize that we are one with the source itself and we are the source itself. So let's go back. Intelligence is the ability to face the unknown and to be able to manage it or deal with it. So it has nothing to do with knowledge. It has nothing to do with what you can get in a book. Intelligence therefore means you have to think for yourself. Thoughts must come from within yourself. And where does it come from? Is it coming from you and me? No, it comes from the source itself. So when you have to face something that you have never done or dealt with in your life, the information comes to you and it's revealed from you from within yourself, millisecond by millisecond, and allowing you to go step by step without any prior knowledge. That is when you become one and one and in tune with the source itself. 
The next thing about intelligence is that, and it's at the core, it's compassion. It takes love from one level to another level. And as love moves from its most basic level, and if you start with love at the most basic level, it is, it is not such a good place to be, you know, because love is always at the lowest level, the lowest rung on the ladder, is closely related and connected to attachments. And attachments will always bring sorrow or grief in your life. Just think of it. I don't have to go into details with that. So when we move love to the level of compassion, then it becomes a totally different vibration. That's, that's what even Jesus spoke about, to love your neighbor as yourself. That's moving it to a place where you are one with everything. The day we all start to understand that we are one with everything, how do we treat everything? How do we relate to everything? And that's what the holly that is of this year, 2021, the love and the gentleness, how we treat everything with gentleness in our heart. Now, let's go back to intelligence. Intelligence, therefore, if we, if we have compassion, it, it is linked. All these three aspects, they are linked on the triangle of life. Because the greatest joy, if you are one with everything and you have compassion, the most important thing you could see in an intelligent person is they ask for nothing. They seek for nothing. They create everything that they need to have in their lives. And if you look in the world, most people only want, want, want. Nobody, very few people in the world at a place where they don't need anything. That's a question when I was quite young, I asked. That was my second question of three questions I asked the divine God at the time as I used to talk to, to this, you know, entity called, that I call God. I said, I want to live a godly life, so show me, tell me. And the answer that I got was, God doesn't need anything, so stop needing, stop needing. It's an interesting place to be. That's how I live my life since then, when I recognize that. Stop needing. If, if, you, if I have a pain in my shoulder, certainly a need arises for relief. But if I stay with the need, I will never get rid of the pain. But if I become detached from the need, then the divine energies flow and everything is corrected very quickly. It doesn't matter whether it's an infection that you have where, and it's causing pain, an injury or causing pain, it all can be healed in a very rapid and short space of time. So, the need. Therefore, what is our nature, really, from a point of intelligence? The ability to share. To share with one another. Everything that you have, you should share. And don't look back for anything in return. Because, you see, most of us always in the mode where we, when we share, we expect. You know why? Because we think that we are so separated from the source itself. And that itself leads us to believe that if I give something, I'm lo I've lost something. Therefore, I have to replace it with something. That is not how it works. If you share something, I can tell you my own experience. Because if you, if, for those who have known me for at least the 40 years or 44 years that I've been a doctor or a physician or whatever you call it, everything that I have found in life, I've given it freely. And you know why it continues to flow? Because everything that I find that I know to be truth, I share it freely. Sometimes people say, why are you sharing this freely? I said, because it came without a tag, price tag. And because I continue to share, I have the greatest joy in my life. Because joy, the essence of joy comes, comes from sharing. If you cannot share, and share of yourself, then you will have little or no joy in your life. You'd always be lonely. So that's intelligence. It's a very complex state. It has nothing to do with writing an exam and acing the exam or doing well in anything. The, the, great, the greatest um, level of intelligence is seen in people who have compassion. And therefore, the, the divine is constantly flowing through them. And because of that, every problem can be solved in that way. Even if you're facing danger, you will know step by step how to get out of it. 
because the paradigm we are talking about that we have now started from the 2020 and the big the big shift in that is occurring in 2021 as i said a new beginning it's a, it's all about this you know believe it or not what i'm going to say to you may sound kind of way out but religion is going to have to change completely and science will have to change completely because science has been based purely on materialism purely on materialism the science of today in medicine is all basically materialistic yet in some of our diagnostic methods you know what we do we use forces outside of the physical realm and ultrasound is existing in the fifth dimensional zone mris and scans and so on all within the fifth dimensional zone when when you do when you do long ago when we did a blood sugar test a random one it didn't give us much information then we went to a fasting one which which we brought time into the picture and so science have been trying to catch up in terms of dimension we've all still at the, at the material level and today we've gone beyond that time situation we went further by doing a two hour um test with glucose you know you take a dose of glucose and test the blood every two hours you see how they brought time into it which is another dimension rather than just a random test and I don't want to go too much into that because that's kind of, you know, the simple stuff that you already know. But I'm just bringing it up to show you that the whole system in the world has to change. And it's, it is not about the pandemic. It's a small, small dot in the whole thing. People didn't realize at the end of this year that it's all about yourself and how you relate to others in the process. So the next phase is, is, is actually to develop peace and serenity under all conditions and a serene person is hard to find and if you find someone who ca carries and embodies serenity you can sit next to that person that that person is carrying the nature of the buddha of the nature of the christ it's all the same the buddha state is the same as the christ-like state it's it's exactly the same it's just different ways of you know describing the same phenomenon the same concept idea so the peace that we want to develop, start the practice, make it a priority in this, this beginning of this new year to start the process that no matter what is happening in your life, get back to your center, get back to your core self where the source of everything resides. There's a core in you. You don't have to find it anatomically. The core is, is a space inside of you. And when you do that, when you enter into that, everything stops. When the mind stops, you're totally one with the source. And if, you, if you're in grave danger, whether it's from an illness or maybe an accident or maybe whatever is facing you, a tsunami, a hurricane, if you can go into that source, the divine is not about disease, degeneration, and death. The divine is not about losing your life. The divine is everlasting, it's eternal. And if you can be in tune with that, suddenly everything changes. Everything changes. So it is very important for you to start thinking of developing that aspect of yourself. And the, the last one is actually joy. And I've said, I've, give, I've already hinted that the, the, the starting point of joy is the, the act of sharing. Sharing of yourself, of your time, of whatever you have. You know, we put so much emphasis on money and it is important. And when you don't have it, then you're in trouble. <laughs> you know, but you must have some at least. But the thing about money is that it's an energy, it's a vibration. And we have known this for a long time, all of us. Today, we know that in the near future, we may not need even a credit card. We may not need even a bank note. <clears throat> That's only representative of something else. Today, money moves as pixels and, you know, tiny bits of information from one place to the next. So money is just vibration. And all of the money available in the world, you can have access to it. And I don't mean that you can just dip your hand in an empty pot and pull out money. No, whatever you want in your life, you can create. You can create. But our, our biggest fear, as we get older and we have less and less money to live with or live from, then we start having fear and we bring in all the, the, the emotions, you know, 
And that stymies us, that stops us, that pr puts us in a totally different category altogether. I, I can assure you that people will, people will say to, you know, okay, Harry, you were born differently, or you live in a, a better life, the last life and this life. No, no, this is my first life. This is the first expression of this individual in this life, of the divine. And I'm at peace with the fact that if I, and when I disappear, if I die, I'm at peace with it. Because I am, the, I know, and I've come to the conclusion that I am the divine. And I also know that all of you all, they are the divine as well. And it doesn't really matter what happens to me, I'm still the divine. There's some missing part of the puzzle. So let's talk a little bit about what happens after death, because that is relevant to 2020 and 2021 and as we move forward. Religion taught us and gave us two stories, as I've said before. Those are old concepts now, and the new concepts are totally different. And whether you want to move with it and dig deep into it and find out for yourself, please feel free. Or you might choose to reject what I have to say. But most people on the planet, almost 100%, almost, maybe 99.99% .99 of people when they die, they go to sleep and there's no consciousness. You are finished. Now, if that happens to me, I am okay with that too because I know even now that I am the divine and when I die, I'm still the divine. I'm not Harry. Right now, that's only a label they have put on me. Have you ever wondered, you see a label with olive oil, it's in the bottle and it's filled and you have a label written olive oil. Do you think what is written there is the same as what is in the bottle? The answer is no. So this is Harry Rama, it's only a label, <laughs> you know, but there's something else that is me. And I know what that is. I feel that in me. That's what causes me to, to be what I am. And all of you have the same ability. So what I'm pro providing for you today and giving you some hints as to what is possible, most people up to this point, very, most people when they die, they are finished. It's not, they do not exist anymore. There's no such a thing as a soul surviving death. You may want to argue with me. The only thing that survives death is the divine itself. Now, in this lifetime, can you come to know that you are the divine? If you come to know that you are the divine, then here's what. You will be the divine. You will live like the divine. You will think like the divine. You will act like the divine. And that's the only proof that you have that you have the divine, that you're, the fruits that you are emanating that comes from the divine is the hallmark of the divine in you. And if you cannot be there, then you are not the divine by way of your thinking. So let us change our way. What I'm saying to you is that's my view of the future. That's my view of the pivotal year of 2020, that the old system is coming to an end. There is no reincarnation, there, and I'm being very strong with this. There's no heaven and hell. You see, this concept of heaven and hell, it's an old paradigm. It's a story. It's a story that's given to us because we couldn't understand any more than that. So heaven and hell, where in the universe the divine is less and where is more? If there's a heaven and hell, and it's true, then in hell, the divine is probably a minus in hell. And if there's a heaven, it's a plus, plus, plus in hell, in heaven. But that's not the truth. The truth is the divine is everywhere the same. So there's no heaven and hell. <laughs> there's no reincarnation. Who reincarnates? Who wants to reincarnate? It sounds like a good principle when people who have not been in sync with heaven and hell stories they jump on the next bandwagon, which is all still moving backwards, not moving forward, not moving into a higher vibration. So reincarnation is just another story. Who wants to reincarnate? It's only the ego self wants to reincarnate. It's not the divine. There, there's no, nothing for the divine to reincarnate into. The, the divine is constantly manifesting in forms. And so I will put it this way to you to help you to understand. If Harry Ramarain dies, this physical body dies, here's what. I am still the divine. And the divine will manifest itself in other forms. And that's still me. Many, many years ago, I had an experience. I, the experience was, it was my third attempt at 
experiencing death in a meditative form. And in the two previous experiences, I always still recognize who Harry was in the scheme of things in my mind. Somebody's asking if I believe in reincarnation. Answer is absolutely no, I just said it. Reincarnation doesn't exist. It does not exist. So in the third experience of that, experiencing of death and what is going through in my life and so on, I came to the conclusion I couldn't find Harry. I could not find it. And that disturbed me a whole lot. Two previous experiences of that, exp of that e experiment or meditation, Harry still existed. But in this third one, it was so enlightening, I couldn't find myself, but I was conscious. And that led me to a totally different way of thinking because there was no longer Harry after death. But one day, I felt better about the whole experience because I felt that everything that was me has become the universe. It is part of the whole. So I see a next question. I would mm, talk about the karma. Yes, I believe in karma. It's karma is, has nothing to do with the past and has nothing to do with the future. Karma is always in the moment. That is what you are listening to now, what actions you are taking now is affecting and creating the next moment. It has nothing to do with good and bad. It has nothing to do with suffering. It has to do simply with what is in the moment. So karma is the moment recognizing itself in each moment as itself, meaning that whatever is happening in your life right now, in your mind right now, you're creating the next moment. And that's all karma is. They have painted a bad picture of karma to us, that you have lived in a past life and you had bad karma and you come in this life working it out. All is the divine. Everything is the divine. All is Brahman, as the Upanishads says. So how could God come here with karma? <laughs> Try to figure that out. Anyway, all right, let's get back to what we're talking about again. So in, in, in the life of human beings, we have come 2020, and I'm going to repeat that 2020 is the end of science as it has been, and the end of religion as it has been as well. And a new paradigm is shaping. Are you, are you all willing to look deep into yourself to find the truth? The only way that can happen is if you empty yourself, empty yourself, start removing the programs. I talked, I've been talking to people for about at least 35 to 37 years about all of this, you know, but people still continue to accept what they accept. I'm not upset about that and I'm not bothered by it. The thing is that it's hard to get the masses to change. Very difficult. So, but we have to still continue what we are doing, despite whatever is happening. And um, it is extremely difficult for people to hold up, to let go of that old paradigm, that paradigm of 3Ds, that paradigm of, that creates the whole concept of heaven and hell after death and create the concept of reincarnation after death. That paradigm has to go. 2020 is the beginning of all of that. It's a transition. 2021 is the beginning of a new way of thinking entirely new way of thinking. I'm not alone in this, you know. There are other people in everywhere in the world is saying exactly the same thing. But not many people are listening because we are all clogged up. It's like you already finished with writing a book. It's printed. You have cover. You have wrappings. You can't go put in another word in there. We are like, that, like a book. It's already written. The script is there. It's finished. It's, it's now published and now it's a book. If you have to change that, you have to go dismantle and create a new edition to add things to it. You cannot go back to the old book and add to it. You have to create a new edition and create your new ideas and thoughts. That's what I'm talking about. It is time for us in 2021 to start the journey. And if you trust what I'm saying, you can find the truth yourself. You don't have to listen to what I'm telling you. You can continue to argue within yourself. Stop the argument and get into the stillness, get into the silence, and you will find the truth. It will be revealed to you from day, from day to day, from time to time. So what is going to help you? What is it, which is the energy is going to drive the driving force in your life? 
about 20 years ago, someone that I've never met before, and I've never met him again, he, he was a medical doctor from upstate New York. He came and he dropped this in front of me and said, Harry, you're the keeper of this. And I said, hmm, no, please. I know that crystal is a Marcel Vogel crystal, which cost a lot of money in the time when I have met with Marcel and he was selling these crystals in Denver, Colorado. These were so expensive that I couldn't afford it. And um, if you look at it, it's natural quartz, but quartz normally is hexagonal. It has six sides, but this has 12 sides. If you look, you would see the sides all around. It's amazing. This crystal has been sitting around in my offices over the years. And um, this crystal is just a tool to access the dark energies. It's not a crystal to treat yourself with, but it gives us the opportunity in our work to access the dark energies. And um, it's man-made in the sense that it's natural crystal, but it's cut with 12 sides. And that makes it very different. It's, it's the way forward, so to speak. This is another of the same one. And I'm showing it to you because you see, th this is proof of what we have been saying for quite a few years now. Now we can measure the dark energies in people and help people by way, by way of the techniques that we have been teaching. And I've taught in the webinars already the ways of the dark energy. As you develop more and more what I call dark energy, DX3 as I call it, you are going to transform your life. The problem here is that most people get into routines. Routines. And um, the thing is that when you are in a routine state, you get up every morning, you do things, you lose the essence of the divine. So what I'm going to suggest in 2021 is this. Know what you have to do, but be spontaneous, meaning that if you feel that every morning when you wake up or every night when you go, it's a little bit different. You see, this, these are new ideas that, that came to me um, just over the last 24 hours. That is, we become creatures of habit. And when we become creatures of habit, it's like I have some colleagues who would write on their WhatsApp and they would say, blessings to you, blessings to you, blessing, and they repeat that eventually becomes like a cliche. It has no meaning. It has no life. It has no divinity in it. it the, the infinite is, has lost its meaning in it. So what I'm saying to all of you who are listening to this is let your life be spontaneous. Let it be in, a, in, in the way of, I'm just looking at my time. Let it be in, in the way that you wake up in the morning and if you feel like doing it, it feels strongly to do anything to enhance your life. Do it. And if it doesn't feel right, don't. Don't make it a habit. If it is at 12 o'clock in the day, you're doing something and you feel a strong urge within yourself, the spirit is moving you, the divine is moving you to go and connect. Stop and go and connect, even if it is for a minute or two minutes. So what I want you to do is to get away from routine habits of you know, doing the breathing exercises and doing all the techniques. Let it be spontaneous. Let it come from within. Instead of you doing it and trying to force it, if it comes spontaneously, it is the flow of the divine in you connecting back to itself. All right? So does that make any sense to you? Just think of it. Just kind of pushing you in a different direction for a short while. And somebody's asking, what are the dark energies? Goodness, you know, Go back to, this, to the webinars, the webinars on it. Dark energies is actually a cellular energy that is one of two. You, we produce light and we produce darkness. That's something I discovered over the years. And I can spend a minute um, talking to those who are new. Your cells generate photons, light. A photon is the smallest particle of light. And your cells generate photons. It's connected intimately with your life force, your vitality. And life force or light is connected to function. So it gives you the ability to function. Dark energy is for regeneration. It's for rejuvenation. It is anti-aging. It is longevity. 
most people who have a high life force but a, a very low level of dark force, dark energies throughout their life, they will eventually degenerate and die. If you have very high levels of DX3 or dark energies, then you can live a longer life. Live long enough to be able to get back in tune with the this, this source itself. We need time for it, you know? So th this dark energy is generated from your cells and it literally does so many things. I have said before that the dark energies that your cells produce, it is the same dark energy that transforms a caterpillar in a cocoon to become a butterfly, yeah? Just to give you an example to those, for those who are new. The dark energies is extremely important. If you generate enough dark energies, your immune system does not have to do very much. It is the pure divine energies that will take care of anything that is against life in your body. We have said this long before the pandemic, but how many people took that to, the, to a cellular level and therefore knew in themselves that COVID-19 will not get into their body and stay in their body for very long. Meaning that if it comes into your body and all of us would have been exposed to COVID-19 in, in this last year, but if you produce enough dark energies, let's assume you, the average, by the way, of dark energy in people is always up two out of 10, extremely low, almost very little. But if your dark energy is like eight out of 10, COVID comes into your body. I can guarantee you from the, all the research that I've been doing for the last few years, that even cancer cells will break down back to microbiome. Viruses will disappear as well. Bacteria will get, get away as well. Parasites will be removed. And any cell that is not doing anything that is right for you, any cell that is morphed into what we call even a senescent cell that we find a lot of people with strokes, you know, cardiovascular accidents, cerebrovascular accidents. You have a lot of senescent cells in people who get that. So here's what, if you have enough dark energies, then all these cells would revert back to healthy microbiomes. Your immune system doesn't have to fight as much. But in the modern world, when we don't have enough dark energies generated by our cells, the immune system is working 24 hours a day and use, using up all your reserve energy. It takes energies to fight, you know. It takes energies to fight a battle. So, somebody's asking how there was a universe created. There was never a creation at all. God has never, never been a creator. The universe is the divine. We always think that God created the universe. That is not so. God is the universe. <laughs> There's no creation. Man is a creator and man can create. But the divine God is not. And so science would always start, always be looking for and talking about a big bang. And there was never a big bang. That a big bang goes back only in, in terms of linear time. There's no linear time with the divine. The universe has always been. In fact, man has always been too. <laughs> Because everything that is of the divine is exactly manifesting itself all the time. It is only that in the 21st century today, what we are is what has become of man from the very beginning to now. Everything has always been. It is always changing forms. You may think I'm crazy in making that statement, but God is not a creator. God has never created anything. It is as simple as there's nothing for God to create because God is everything. I'm a creator. All of you out there are creators. Besides, uh, besides that point, anything that is created can never be the same as the creator. But the moon is the divine. The sun is the divine. All of you are the divine because you are not a created being. You are a manifestation of the divine. You are organic pixels coming out of the well of the void. The well of where? The void. Okay, so where am I? A new paradigm. It's a little bit shocking, but I thought I should just open my heart and see what I want to see and see it with, with, with enough you know, power <laughs> to get my point across that we have come to the end of an era in 2020, a way of thinking. You will see science will have to change and it will change. Religion is going to slowly, the old system will slowly die. 
it has to change. We are moving into a totally different era. Behind the curtains, a lot has been happening and it will continue to happen. And if you want to see if I'm right or wrong, just continue to observe yourself, observe your own self, go into your own space, your inner space, and all the answers will come to you. This, that's exactly how I get the answers. I don't literally have to read any book to get an answer. You know, in fact, for many years, I stopped kind of looking at too many books and reading. I mean, buy a book, read one page, and that's enough, <laughs> you know. All the information I get is straight from the source itself because I know the art of stilling the mind and entering into that still state. And all of you can do that. I'm no different. I didn't come here with a higher vibration in this life than anybody else. I, I only started to become, I only started to understand me. Why am I different from a lot of people and not different in the sense of being better, but different. It is simply because I asked key questions and I got my important answers when I was quite young, you know. I'll, I'll share something with you. When I was about eight years old, there were three questions I asked God that I used to talk to frequently, in fact, all the time. First question was, well, I'll give you them, not maybe in order. When I came in the world, who came in the world? The next one was, which religion should I follow? if I'm a child of God. And the next one was, I want to live a godly life, show me how to live a godly life. And the answers were very simple, complex, complicated. I had to figure it out myself. The answers to the, to the question is, you, do, you have to belong to all religion. In order to belong to all, you have to belong to none, zero. The answer to the question I, 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 I gave already of how to be live a godly life, stop having needs. When you stop having needs, the answer was God doesn't need anything. So stop having needs. You be, you, that's how you live a godly life. It was not about going to a temple or a church. It was not going to a mosque. It was not about you know, giving charity. It was not about praying or meditating. Stop having needs. <laughs> And that is going to be difficult for you to understand because we all have needs. We have needs for air to breathe. We have need for food and so on. But the, you will figure it out. I did. You know. And the last one was, it came as a surprise 15 years after I asked the question. And the answer was, when you came into the world, it's nothing but the divine. Now, I didn't see myself different or special in any way. I recognized that everything was the divine in that moment, that all of you out there are the divine. And I started practicing those things with many failures. Sometimes I wanted to beat somebody. You know, I wanted to kill somebody because of what they did to me. But I corrected all of that, you know, because people are doing, you know, people are doing things to us all the time. And I can guarantee you all of us have bad mind, bad mind. You know why? Because we're still holding on to things. Let us work towards clearing those things. Those things belong to the other paradigm. Let us get to a new paradigm. All right, I think I've gone just over an hour, so I, I think I should stop at this point, John. And I don't know if I need to have questions, but I will try my best to, to see what I have to see if a question comes up. <laughs> you know? Yes, well, you answered, you answered a lot of them when we actually had them. Yeah, right. So, um, I'll take just a moment. So guys, if you have additional questions, put them in the chat and we will move them to the Q&A section. Right now we only have one in queue. So bring your questions on, please. Uh, Dr. Harry covered a lot of really, really amazing stuff. So, and um, and yeah, that, that what I really loved that presentation, Harry, by the way. I thought it was very, very, very uh, connecting and, and I, for me it was very impactful. So. Okay, so guys, I want to briefly take you um, through the Vitality Academy. This is a presentation of the Vitality Academy, which is a partnership with myself and the doctors at Ishtara. We just finished a prom promotion that we had for Christmas that ended last night. So we had a lot of new people join and we, we want to take a moment to thank you and honor you for joining the, the Vitality Academy. I, I, you know, before talks, I never know how deep they are. Today's talk was tremendously deep. And it's one of those talks like when we're done, I'm going to take it in for a bit because this is really wonderful. And 
I, I'm really in great gratitude for you, Dr. Harry, for having it. So I'm gonna take you through a couple of the previous webinars, just briefly, that we had had in the Vitality Academy that may be relevant, one, to the talk that we had, to kind of tie things in for people here, and then also that may be relevant because very commonly people do these goals and all that kind of good stuff for the new year. And uh, I'll, I'll give you a couple that will tie in with that. So I'm gonna share this real quick. And Dr. Harry, if you can just let me know when it is up, I'd appreciate that, please. So, um, so a couple that, that I think tie in very, very importantly. And these are, all of the presentations are incredible, guys, all of them. But some tie in kind of with the New Year's resolution concept. So a couple that, that kind of came to mind was, would be diet. And there's um, a presentation by Dr. Nalash called Let Food Be Thy Medicine. And that had a six-week challenge after it. And people loved, loved, loved. It's primarily about anti-inflammatory foods. And it was a deep dive in that direction. And it's actually part of a series. There'll be several talks uh, on the Let Food Be Thy Medicine topic. That was one. So that was a good one. Another one that I had the honor to do was creating a sustainable workout habit. It was kind of designed for the times we're in now where many people are at home and they don't have the opportunity or ease to go to the gym. So it was designed to have minimal actual equipment, primarily your body weight. And I kind of took you through a workout routine. And the one that's actually on the academy has a PDF of actually really lining out uh, more of a more definitive breakout of the workouts. And then the last one, and actually it's on the same line here, is a two-part series that Dr. Harry did called Behind the Mask. And uh, when Dr. Harry was talking earlier about giving so generously, he discussed these food combinations and certain, I almost want to call them um, complete foods because they would tie in the three Don Tien's. Um, and then certain food combinations would tie in, for example, fennel seeds and almonds, tie in the three dantians. And there's a whole series and they would, uh, they would benefit certain body systems, certain body channels within you. So those, it was a very, very, very powerful, profound and generous presentation by Dr. Harry. I think it's absolutely incredible. Um, and then last but not least, because someone had asked about the dark energies, this is actually of our presentations that we've had in Vitality Academy since we started, Dr. Harry did a three-part journey into the dark energy. So if you invest in the entire membership, you actually access all three. And he really takes you through. So those who are unsure what it means and all of that, it's, well, he calls it DX3, right? Is that what we call it, Dr. Harry, now? Yes. DX3, the oh, dark yeah. energies? Yeah. Um, so the DX3 is explained there in detail. So you really have four and a half hours of explanations with Q&A. So you, you can get a deep dive there if you have questions about it. And uh, so let's jump into questions. So guys, thank you so much again for being here. So let's see what questions. Um, okay, so the first question we had in the queue was from Zalahar. Would you be able to show us the rune exercise for Thorn? Yeah. Do you happen to know Thorn? Well, what you do is if you look at Thorn, Thorn is like this. These are runes. <laughs> I love it. You have it right. He's like, boom. Yeah, I got Thorn. Yes. Right. Yes. So this is an old card from a long time ago with a star or a logo on it, you know. Um, mm. But these were actually made from pictures of drawings, you know, of the, of the rune stone itself. So that's a rune stone here. And this one was the one for last year, which was the Ingus. So the way you, the, I can show you Ingus because that's a relevant. It's about energy. It's about um, expanding your lung. And that's important for everybody in this time where you actually cross your knees. Now, I don't think you'll be able to see me because I don't. I was trying to see if I could demonstrate that you cross your knees. It's difficult because of the position where I am with the, with the mic, microphone and the camera. So you're crossing your knees to so create an X. That's the, the, the lower X here. And you're crossing your elbows and you throw it up in the air like this and you breathe. And if you can do that 
couple of times for the day, do three or four or five breaths at a time, then you expand your lung. So one, the thorn, the thorn is a very, very simple one. If you look at the thorn like this, then what you do is you can put your hands like this in front of you and you form that, you can say a triangle, right? Mm -hmm. And that's one aspect of the thorn. So it's like moving forward. So yes, that, that's great. What Thank you. Like. Okay, so I think I'm getting. Yep, better. you're in. You're in camera. Yep. So that, that's that's one way of doing it. There's a, there's another way. It's like doing something like this in the center of your of your body, and you're creating the same effect. So there are two versions of it. And maybe okay. I could go. I can't go further in the wall, but you put elbow here down in the middle, and then I can show. One. So it's hand here, right? Yeah, and then top. hand here. Yep, and yeah. then hand here. And it forms so the, same, the same pattern like this that you're seeing there. Right? Yep. Yeah. And you can also do it in front of you. So this is the straight line, and then the peak is in front of you like this. Mm -hmm. And you hold that position. So we, my, my, point, my point is all of these things now should move from a place of being this routine, you see, routine goes back to the old paradigm. And that's what that's my message for today as well, that we start looking at life. Let life be spontaneous. Let your giving be spontaneous. Let your doing be spontaneous. Let everything that happens comes from the... And when you are in the spontaneous mode, meaning like when you start... If, if you feel when you wake up in the morning, you must go and run up 10 miles or whatever, then that, your body gets accustomed to that, you know? But when it's spontaneous you make a big shift in your consciousness. That is, if out of the blue you say, okay, I'm going to get up at four this morning instead of getting up at six and running at six, between six and 6.30, you get up at four and you just go on for a run. That will shift your consciousness a lot you know, higher, better level than just the routine. Because our bodies are creatures of habit. It, it, it follows habits and routines and therefore gets stagnant at that point. And growth doesn't happen. So, you know, all of us do these exercises. We go to the gym. We do all of these exercises all the time. And we do it routinely. And there's no space. That routine gets stuck in the body. There's no space for the mind and for the spiritual aspect of yourself. So what mm -hmm. I'm saying is do, them, do these exercises. Do whatever you have to do. But just let it just happen. <laughs> let it come from yourself. And, you know, sometimes people say, well, Harry, um, I didn't feel like doing anything for a week. Is that okay? Well, if, that, if you're happy, that, that's okay. You don't have to ask me that question, you know. So the, 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 that's a point I want to raise because we tend to feel that we have to be doing it in, in a routine way. That's all a left brain way of thinking. One of mm -hmm. the things about life is if you want to progress rapidly, we need to move from the masculine mode of doing, 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 and start to de develop the feminine role. And when we say the feminine, it has nothing to do with sex and sexual differentiation. And the feminine role is really moving back within yourself. That's the difference. One is outward, one is inward. That's why a right-hand conch shell actually moves the energies in. Right? Can you, can you explain the conch shell again? Why are you there? Why are you there? Yeah, how to do show it. us how to do it. Yeah. Right. You, this is my right hand is facing me. And then I put the thumb into the hand there. Close mm -hmm. the fingers, leave the thumb open. You can move this one, you know, freely. And then the index finger actually joins the thumb and the rest of it goes under. So if, if you notice, the opening is on the right side. If I do the opposite, the opening is on the left side. So that's, that, there... that's left hand conch shell, which moves energies outward, where this okay. one is ready. The right hand conch shell moves energies back inside. So it's a good posture for helping you to get back into yourself. So if we're, if we're looking to be more outgoing, be more assertive, maybe before an exercise or something like that, we do left hand first. Hand. Yeah. And then to go in, we do the right one. Okay. Right. So there's a and the easiest way to tell if it's left or right is the hand that the the hand that has the opening on top is the one that okay yeah gotcha. facing you. Yeah. Thank you. 
Um, okay. Uh, a person had a question, and Roshan partially answered it. So uh, they're asking about where to take Holly. How do you call it? Oh, okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Well, the, okay. So they're asking about Holly, and then Dr. Roshan chimed in. Thank you, Dr. Roshan, that the Holly is available at Ashtara. And then they asked the follow-up question, how often do we take the Holly? Then if you if you get a bottle of holly from the practice here, we can create make that remedy in a two ounce bottle for you. Then you can take like four or five drops once or twice a day. And that would last you a couple of months well, about three months, I mm -hmm. think. Yeah, I would think so. Okay. Yes. Now let's get to the other question. The other question, thank you for answering that. How do you quiet the mind when you're starting meditation? Well, the thing, the thing about it is that meditation is a state. Huh? It's meditation is just like medicine. I always said that meditation is not necessary because medicine is not necessary. But if we choose to go into the stillness, it's the attitude of stillness that we want. And one way of stilling the mind is to get the brainwave at a lower level. And there's a very simple way of doing it. All you need to do is slow down your breathing. There are so many breathing techniques, but I look for the very simple ones that everybody can practice. So you take a stopwatch, and for a few minutes, what you do is slow down your breathing to at least three breaths a minute. If you can do three, practice with four. A lot of our um, patients are doing even two breaths a minute, or even some people are doing one breath a minute, because they've been working on this for several years now. But if you lower your breathing to three breaths a minute and lower, you are going to go from a beta brainwave state to through alpha into even theta and sometimes delta. And there's a link between the frequency of your breathing. So most people are breathing eight to 14 times a minute. I practice easily, maybe 15 minutes sometimes, up to 20 minutes at breathing at two breaths a minute, which is 15 seconds in slowly and 15 seconds out. 15 seconds in, 15 seconds out. So in ha in one minute, you have only two breaths. So the, the, the very powerful technique to quiet the mind is to slow down and you will achieve meditation even in that state as well. Because if you, if you get to a point of doing one and a half breaths a minute, which is 20 seconds breathing in slowly and 20 seconds breathing out, it's not about breathing in and holding the breath at any point. You are slowing down the breathing. It's a rhythmic breathing pattern. And when you do that, you are going to enter into a lower brain wave from beta to alpha to theta. This is a simple technique that works for everyone. So just practice slowing down your breathing. Use, you, use a, a stopwatch. Like you use that on your phone or that one on the phone mm -hmm. and it, it's very simple so that answers that question and for those who have an iphone either an ipad or iphone there's an app called breath plus i'll put it in the chat yeah that unfortunately at this point is not available on um, android devices but the breath plus will actually give you an audio and visual representation of, of the breath pace and what I'll typically do. So for example, let's say your goal is uh, is the two breaths a minute. So you start with, let's say three breaths a minute, which is a 10 in and 10 out. So you can say 10 in and 10 out and it'll show you kind of going up the screen for 10 and going down the screen for 10, okay? Yeah. And then what we typically do is go up one second each side. So then you do an 11, 11, up, down. You just do it for like two minutes up, down, right? And then you go 12, 12, up, down. And then once you get to 15, it's easy. But if you do, I'll forewarn you, if you go from 10, 10, which is the three breath, to like 12, 12, and then 14, 14, the two second jump uh, can be kind of stressful. So I just want to give you guys a heads up that if you're moving in that direction, it is not particularly easy. So in my experience, I do a second increment. So I'll, I'll start at a, a pace that I can fairly comfortably do. You do notice things starting to calm down, and then and you just do. And by the way, the program does have a timer, so we can do a uh, two or three minute. If you are on Android, the workaround is an app called Gym Boss, G Y M B O S S. It's not quite as fancy. It's actually designed for working out, but you can actually set short timers, and uh, you have to kind of manually put it in. But you can begin to. Um, 
you can begin to use that to slow your breath and, and, and make the changes. It's not, again, not as easy as breath plus, but it's good. Um, okay. There's one, John, called I Breathe that I found as well. It's I on breathe. both? And you can do that easily. You set it and for the, exactly the 10 sec, you know, 10 seconds in, 10 seconds out, or, you know, whatever you like, 15 seconds in, 15 seconds out. Okay. But if you, if you put me back on, on the video. You're there. I don't see myself. I see an advertisement. Enjoy a 3D trial membership. I uh, just click on the X. You should be able to close it up. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, let me see. All right, so th th this is the app here. Mm. Right, so you can Which see. Which one it is it? At the bottom. Yeah, um, that one there. Okay. And the, the people can see that. I breathe. Yes, it's a blue with a with a, a sine wave on it. Blue and yeah. white with a sine wave. Yep. It's called I breathe. It's it's a good one. I mean, I recommend that to people. It's you okay. That's for the ten seconds or fifteen seconds easily. And that one may have a may have an Android, guys. I I don't know. I was unaware of that. So that's great. So so there are more more than one app that you can you can use for this. So uh, I I made the point. There's a link between breathe breathing and the brain wave patterns. The alpha, theta you know, delta brainwave pattern. So when you slow down the breathing, when you slow down your breathing, you're actually entering into a slower brainwave. And people who have difficulty falling asleep, if you do that at nighttime, after a few minutes, you start to feel to yawn, you know, that feeling of wanting to go to sleep. Okay. Um, so I had a couple questions since we have okay. a few minutes. <laughs> um, so, so on the joy and happiness, um, you had talk, uh, active sharing is a great way to create the joy and happiness aspect. Right. Any yeah. other suggestions in, in the direction to create more of that for people? Yeah. So the sharing uh, and being generous, yeah. that was one. Yep. It's getting into the, the pattern of choosing that everything to do everything that you're doing to enjoy it, meaning that you connect with it. The enjoyment okay. thing is if you, let's say you're washing dishes then you enjoy the, the, the washing of dishes by connecting to the, to the dishes. You're going to mm -hmm. treat the cup or the plate or the knife or fork or whatever, just as you treat yourself. So you become one with it. And that is also enjoyment as well. And you, it brings mm -hmm. joy to you because you're one with, you're practicing one with everything. That's, you know, it's, it's a sharing of your energies. And don't, don't forget, I, I will just say something here about the chakras that, um, that is, you know, to give you more light on the track. Body, mind, and spirit is a, a triad that we exist within, all right? So mm -hmm. we have a physical body, we have a, a mental or mind, and we have our connection with the spirit. So the first five chakras from the throat, I should say downwards, five chakras are located in the body and deal exclusively with the body. The next chakra, which is the brow chakra deals with the mind, which is awareness, consciousness, the ability to create, the ability to create an idea. And I will just make a point here too that, you know, science says energy cannot be created or destroyed, but that's only a, a saying that we have adopted. I mean, there's no proof that that is really so, you know. Let's give you an example. Suppose from a no mind state, you actually get an idea a beautiful idea that you've never had before, you know, that idea immediately, it's an idea, therefore it's information. That information simultaneously generates, guess what? Energy or vibration. And that vibration immediately and simultaneously manifests itself in tiny matter. Matter, energy, and information is the holy triad in nature. So if you come up with an idea in your head, in your mind, or you create an idea consciously, then you are creating matter as well. And that's what we are about. That's what human beings are about. That's the capacity we have. That's the talent we have. That's our infinite possibility. So we can generate matter as well. <laughs> so the next chakra is the, is the crown. And that connects us to the entire universe, the divine level. So that's the, the, the holy triad explained in the form of chakras. So five chakras from the throat downwards deals with the physical body. 
This one deals with the mind, but the mind is in the body as well as outside of the body. So John, you and I, and all of you out there can have an influence on the entire country, the influence on the entire planet, as long as we have more control of our minds. Because, you know, the average person may not even have control of their energies in their house, their space, because they don't have a powerful mind. They don't have control of their mind. The mind is controlling them. When you turn the picture, the, 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 the arrow around, you are now in control. Then the mind becomes powerful. And when the mind becomes powerful, you can think of things and make it happen. And we need to have our minds in a, in a very powerful way. We need to calm ourselves. We need to control, get, take back control of our minds. And that's what this chakra is about. It's a chakra for creating. But it's a chakra that gives us the opportunity to also connect with the entire space out there. And it gives us the link to the spiritual. The spiritual chak chakra, which is the crown chakra, this is the brow, is what connects us to the whole. And another time, I will explain to you the, a phenomenon which is the ultimate um, connection with the divine by a sitting posture. And all it, you do is to sit upright, sacral bone out. And if you're comfortable with it, you will notice that your chest opens up. And then you take your tongue and go all the way back at the roof of the mouth. And way back? The way back one or, or just um, the soft part well, of the palate? Well, my suggestion is go as far back as you can go comfortably. I don't want you to dislocate your jaw, <laughs> you know, your, your, your temporal mandible, your joint. But um, some people could go further back, but do this as the best as you can. And when you, that happens, that's a whole different webinar altogether in the future, you know, about what the energies are doing in the body. Mm. So we leave it at that. I just wanted to bring back the chakras in terms of body, mind, and spirit. I love it. Well, guys, that was a great teaser for our next webinar from Dr. Harry. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with that, uh, we are out of time. We have no questions up. And right. uh, I want to thank you, Dr. Harry. That was an absolutely wonderful, wonderful presentation. I really, really enjoyed it. I know everyone who's on here enjoyed it. And uh, I want to thank thank Dr. Harry for, for sharing his wisdom this beautiful day as we enter into beautiful 2021. All of you for your year ahead and day ahead. And we look forward to seeing you at the future one. And, and don't forget to take the time to kind of be in the moment and allow the inspiration to come from within versus trying to push to go hard. So, so for, from, from what I got from a lot of this, Harry, is to kind of be more inward, allow, allow, the, allow the spark of, of inspiration to come versus having such a set, rigid, pushing almost. Yeah, happened. and you can feel it. You can feel it. It feels like you're trying versus being excited. Like, like children don't try to play. They just go and play because it's fun. You know, almost that kind of energy. So that was really, really wonderful. Yeah. All awesome. right. Goodbye, everybody. And hope you have a wonderful year, 2021. It's a five number, number five, which brings a lot of mystery and mystique in the life as well. Mm -hmm. So All look right. forward to that. Take charge of your lives. Take charge of your mind. Thank you so much. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.